One might think that in these days of turmoil and so much conflict that, and even the whole pandemic thing, that, that it would be really tough to think about kindness, to be kind to your, your neighbor, to find that inner superhero. And our uh, guest today is Adrian Banker, who's written a book called Your Hidden Superpower, The Kindness That Makes You Unbeatable at Work, Connects You With Anyone. And, and welcome, it's nice to have you with us. What a, what a beautiful, wonderful message that you created here in this book. Thank you, Carlos. Yeah, I, I wrote this a couple of years ago now, which is amazing to think about. And it does seem like we need kindness today more than ever. Tell me about the, the power of that, because, you know, it's, it's easy to say, but it's difficult to do. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, what I realized is kindness was really taught to be this very elementary principle. And we've seen a lot of campaigns and we need them, random acts of kindness, kindness for children. But it seemed as though somewhere between elementary school or grade school and adulthood, many of us grownups have lost the intentionality behind kindness or never even were taught how to be intentionally kind. And it's something that I was mentored in uh, to be intentionally kind, especially at work, because that was where I spent the most time. Mm -hmm. It's where I engaged with the most people, different personalities, different ages, different cultures. And it was just, it was seen as a universal language to me, where if we all were kind to each other, then we could be a better community, we could be a better corporation, and we could be better people. Your kind self is your best self. And I saw where in my life and in my career, there were these signposts where at this crossroads, somebody was kind to me and that's how I went through the next open door. So I call kindness not only <laughs> a, a politeness, but it's a GPS to get you where you wanna go. It gives you a sixth sense in life to help listen to that little voice or that intuition inside of you. And it also just helps you to be stronger, more resilient in times that are really difficult. Now that may be difficult to understand because you are an ABC News correspondent and you've been on Good Morning America and you're in the same news business that I've been in my entire career. And it's a tough business. It's sometimes it's not a very kind business. And to hear that from a, a colleague is, is, I think interesting that you've approached it that way. Was it something that was instilled in you as a young person, as, a, as you were growing up? It actually happened, you know, again, I talked about being mentored in kindness. Um, I think that you need people who are kind around you to show you the way mm -hmm. with everything in life. I call mentors tour guides in life our greatest adventure <laughs> ever uh, because so many of us are trying to figure out life. But there right. was one particular time in my career at KCRA and I was yelled at or snapped at by one of our colleagues, one of our engineers. And I thought, what is wrong with you? And I wanted to retaliate. You know, I wanted to snap back and something told me, be quiet. Don't say anything. Now, there've been plenty of times that we've all said things in the heat of the moment, <laughs> right? So I'm not perfect. But this one time at the very early stages of my career, I kept my mouth shut. I found out later that his mother had passed away the night mm -hmm. before. And how, how horrible would I feel if I would have snapped back at him? We don't know what people are going through. And even at the beginning stages of my career, I realized that I don't know what's happening behind that person's smile. And so anytime I would be in a tense situation at work, I learned somebody might have died. Somebody might have gone through a terrible situation. A child is in trouble, a divorce, you know. And so I think if we give each other more mercy in that area, we'll become kinder people. You know, and it's so tough now because uh, social media is so ever present in our lives. It's on our phone. It's on, in our hand almost constantly. And it's hard to ignore uh, the lack of kindness. It's hard to ignore just the aggressiveness sometimes of people who troll you or create problems. And, it, and, and so do you have some tools that you use to kind of help you through those sort of things? Well, I've always, it's interesting. And even my mentor said, he t I taught him something. His name is Bill. <laughs> and he said, you taught me that we should all live that we're like we're on a hot mic. We should all live <laughs> like we're on a hot mic. Yeah. If you don't want the thing that you're about to say or post to be on the front cover of, you know, the Washington Post or the New York Times or on their website, then just don't share it. And, and thinking that way that somebody's always watching came from my childhood. My mother would say this to me constantly. She had no idea she was preparing me for the broadcasting world <laughs> and for social media. She would say, Adrian, if, even if you don't see anyone, someone's always watching you. And so whenever I look in that camera, I'm aware there are people behind that lens. Whenever I go on social media and I think of what I'm about to post, I think about the people who will see this and read this, that invisible audience being very real. And we need to see each other more. And I believe that as we think about that, you know, 
being on a hot mic, I believe that being in broadcasting is a perfect preparation for life. Yes, you know, <laughs> for like think of, think of the teenagers now, people look up your social media to, to give you a job application, you know? Yeah. Um, you need to be conscious that you have a reputation that precedes you and that you make a difference. What you say and what you do makes a difference and a ripple effect. Well, I will leave it at that. That is a beautiful uh, thing to say. And being kind just takes a little bit of effort and a smile yeah. on your face can change a person's day. Completely. Yes, it really, it can be the one thing that refreshes someone when they feel financial pressure, marital pressure, job pressure. I mean, right now, even just in terms of the pandemic that we've all been living through yeah. and some suffering through, it is pressure on every side. There's not one part of our life that wasn't affected. And so you smiling at someone, even with your eyes, you opening the door for someone who's on edge, you saying, I'll buy you a coffee. It doesn't take a lot to do those things. And yet if we schedule them, I'm a big proponent of scheduling kindness. So every day you put on your calendar, just like you, you would go to the gym and maybe you're not mm -hmm. going to the gym right now. So you're ch channeling that, you know, <laughs> interpersonal trainer, but you schedule kindness like that. Say every day I'm going to do one kind act or every week I'm going to buy somebody lunch virtually. A big idea that I had was something you could do from your couch. Cause again, I was isolated at yeah. home and couldn't go out and couldn't get a hug. And so I said, okay, I'm going to Venmo people. Here's coffee on me. Here's lunch on me. And that lifted my spirits. Wonderful. Well, you know, being kind is important. And Adrian Banker, we thank you so much for being with us again. The book is called Your Hidden Superpower. What's the rest of it? The kindness that makes you unbeatable. I love that part. Yeah, we, we, we need that right now, right? We need to be unbeatable and you can't beat kindness. So I hope people will read the book and it really helps them. Unbeatable at work and connects you with anyone. Adrian, it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much for joining us and, and best of luck to you. Be safe and be well. Thank you.